at Northwestern. Every time we win a football game, our fans tear down the goalposts, rip them right down and carry them away. It's expensive. Well, this year we sunk our goalposts 16 feet deep, six tons of concrete. You see, we plan on winning a lot of football games. For the first time in their history, the Northwestern Wildcats have won eight consecutive games. And for the first time since 1973, they have defeated the Iowa Hawkeyes. It wasn't so much revenge, it was just that we needed to get this monkey off our back in this 23-game losing streak. Uh, it's nice to come out here and get a win over anybody in the Big Ten. That was the scene here at Dyke Stadium on Saturday as the Wildcats completed a 31-20 victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes for their eighth in a row, a school record. Welcome, everybody, to the Gary Barnett Show. I'm Dave Ennett, the head coach of the Northwestern Wildcats alongside here at Dyke Stadium. And, uh, Coach, it seems every week you rewrite the Northwestern record books. It's been an incredible year, Dave. And, uh, you know, so many people uh, should get credit for it that uh, you, you, you don't get a chance to to talk about, but uh, uh, we've had tremendous support from our fans, and uh, I'll tell you, the game Saturday when Iowa uh, had to call a timeout because it was so loud, uh, I guess all of us have waited for that to happen, and we had tremendous, tremendous fan support, especially given uh, the weather the way it was, and uh, the last three home games have just been wonderful for our players. Here you are now, one victory away from at least a share of the Big Ten Championship. Well, that's uh, you know that's uh, hard to believe, really, uh, when the season started that we'd be in this position, but we are, and and uh, we got one uh, one more to go after, and we're going to go after it. The downside: you lose a great player in Pat Fitzgerald. We lost a great player. That's two great players that we've lost this year, but uh, uh, you know everybody else will pick it up, and and we'll find a way. Well, the uh, look at the first half highlights is coming up. I don't know about you, Coach, but I say we go inside to watch the highlights. <laughs> Dave, you were in a booth Saturday. Well, it was still cold up there. We'll come back with the first half action of the Wildcats and the Hawkeyes on the Gary Barnett Show. Three yards deep in the end zone. Here's the snap to him. He kicks from the one. Low line drive kick bounces at the 45. Russo picks it up at the 40. Back to midfield to the 50. The 45 to 40. There he goes. Fitz not only he was not only our, our best defensive player, he was also our he was really the guy that really united us. Every every third down he, he always said, uh, all right, who's gonna make a third down stop? And really we all rally around him. You know, I think that I think that each person is gonna have to pick up a little bit of that leadership role. Well, we've moved inside where it's a little warmer and cozier. We're in the lobby of Welsh Ryan Arena, McGaw Hall, and this is a building, Gary, that is familiar to Northwestern fans. It's also a building you use quite a bit. We do. Uh, we've got a small indoor facility uh, in the back, uh, Dave, that we use occasionally. Uh, we do some of our off-season workouts in here, but that's going to be replaced by our new building, uh, which uh, will be a state-of-the-art indoor facility that uh, uh, should be finished by the around May or June, and uh, we're anxious to, to get into that as well. I know you also use the uh, basketball court for some ferocious pickup <laughs> games at lunchtime, you and your coaches. Yeah, well, uh, we if you get outside the paint, then it's an illegal <laughs> shot. You have to shoot everything in the paint. Well, is it, is it true you can't foul the head coach? Well, no, you can foul, but if it doesn't bleed, you can't call it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary, you're taking the field against Iowa. Uh, obviously, the weather is a concern. The weather early was a concern. I think as the day went on, uh, David, it really wasn't too bad out there. But early on, the footing was poor. Uh, our, our, our facilities people did a good job of clearing the field, but it was still icy. Uh, but the sun came out and, and made it better. But it, it really hindered the kicking game and hindered our quarterbacks a little bit uh, in throwing. And, and early on, we had some guys that uh, Darnell, in fact, pulled himself out of the game because his hands were numb. Uh, but as the game started on and the sun came out, it got better. Well, let's take a look at the first half action, the Wildcats and the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Senior day at Dyke Stadium with William Bennett and Sam Valenzizzi among the Northwestern seniors being honored in front of a sellout crowd. Gary, it stopped snowing just in time. Uh, our facilities people did a good job getting that snow off the field. And you'll see this opening play, uh, Shaw uh, slips and goes down for minus three yards, I think. And you'll see we have a little trouble going east and west on this field. And also part of that problem was the Iowa defense. On a second and 11 play, Steve Schnur will find Dwayne Bates for your biggest offensive play of the day. At that point, a 15-yard gain down to the 40. This is, uh, I think, our third drive of the game, uh, Dave. And we, uh, it stalls down here with a penalty, and we end up kicking a 51-yard field goal with uh, Brian Goins. It's a great kick, and he really, uh, that thing could have gone 60-somewhat uh, yards. And he did have the win, but it was a great kick. 3-0 in favor of the Wildcats now in the first quarter. Iowa, with about six minutes left back on offense, it'll be Cedric Shaw again. Well, and he did a great job running the ball, and uh, Iowa's front uh, front five did a good job blocking us uh, early in this game. And you see a little dump pass to their fullback, and they were moving the ball, and they had a good plan, and, and their kids were really fired up to play this game and played very physically. Here you'll see them knock us off the ball and get it in the end zone. So now we're down, Dave, 7-3. Uh, to three. Early in the second quarter, Wildcats, though, come right back. Schnur here under some pressure and the first of three Iowa sacks. We had trouble. We had three sacks, which is uh, really odd for us. And then Steve throws this pass that's high, and when those balls get deflected, that's just the kind of thing that happens. goes right into uh, corner's hands, and he runs it in for a touchdown, and now all of a sudden we're down 14-3, to three, and, and we've got our... Uh, we got a real fight on our hands, David. Tom Knight, 28 yards there for the score, but the Wildcats come back with Darnell Autry, a 27-yard game. Well, I like the composure of our team, and I like the way they took the field here, and our offense was, uh, uh, they, they really knew what they had to do, and they came right back in here and did it, and this is a nice throw. This is a fourth down pass uh, to Darren Drexler, and Greg Meyer made a nice call here. And, uh, Schnur stuck it in there. He's really the second uh, receiver on that pass, and and that really helped us tremendously here. Chris Martin does a great job here in the open field. This is Cedric Shaw, and Cedric had a big day. He's a good back. Dave runs hard, and he's got great speed. That forces Iowa to punt from deep in its own end, and Brian Musso does the rest. Well, this is you're going to see a great block right there by Chris Martin and uh, Matt Stewart, and Brian takes it right up the middle, and uh, this is his second uh, touchdown uh, in two years on punt returns, and that was a big play here, but gave us the lead. 17 to 14, and late stages of the first half, a sack there of Matt Sherman by Casey Daly, but the Hawkeyes get a drive going. Well, they uh, hit their uh, big tight end, and he's a good player, uh, Dave, and Eric Collier uh, got beat on coverage and, and turned into a big play for them, and now they go back up ahead. Now the Hawkeyes missed the point after touchdown after Slutsker scored. Any thought in your mind at that point, Gary, that that missed PAT might loom large in this game? Anytime you miss a PAT, um, that crosses your mind. Those are so critical. Uh, and, and really, as, you, as we'll see in the highlights here, it did loom big because on two different occasions, um, Iowa gets themselves in a position to kick a field goal, but because they're down by four, they, they can't do that. And... Uh, that, that's why you can't take anything for granted. Any little block, no matter what it is, it all counts. And uh, just missing an extra point wide like he did to the right, and it was a, their snapper was hurt. So everything comes into play at some time or another in a game. 20 to 17, the score at halftime. Back to take a look at the second half action after this. Now he hits the tight end price in the left flat. Oh, 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 the football picked up by his bailing. The 25, the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! I think Northwestern, because of their, I call it uh, U.S. wide alumni and the fact that they're probably the dream team of this year, would have a humongous following. And it does look like there's a good chance, and certainly this isn't concrete, that they could play Tennessee, which would really be a heck of an exciting game. And Gary, the Bulls were very well represented here at Dyke Stadium on Saturday. For the first time in a long time, they were here to see <laughs> us <laughs> instead of somewhere else. Yeah, the uh, Comp USA Citrus Bowl, uh, the Tostitas uh, Fiesta Bowl, and then the Nokia Sugar Bowl were all in attendance for this game. And they saw a very entertaining football game. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. 2017 Iowa to begin the second half. Wildcats go on offense first and put a drive together. This is a nice drive. This is a great throw to Dwayne Bates and 
Uh, this is the this is the kind of offense I I expect out of our guys uh, more often more than we have been. And here's nice reverse, great call by Meyer. Uh, we, we throw just a little bit early down here. Or this was going to be a big play. Uh, we just everything worked right for us in this drive. You can see a nice uh, nice block in there by Hartle and then a uh, nice run by uh, Darnell on the ISO play. Down to the three yard line, and this will be the uh, first and goal play from the three. And it's nice to get in on first and goal. First time you get in instead of having to go for it two or three times, but that's a great, great drive by our offense and uh, did just what we needed to do. That puts the Wildcats ahead 24 to 20. Now, here's the play, coach, on which uh, Pat Fitzgerald gets hurt. Yeah, you're going to see Pat. He's going to go down on the ground. He's just. He's got his leg in a bad position, and Danny Sutter gets knocked into him, and it just uh, uh, he breaks his ankle right there, and so it, it's just really unfortunate for Pat. Don Holmes comes on and replaces him, and we'll see Holmes get into the action right away. Well, he's right there, and Donnie's going to be a good player now. He's he's got the the build to be a middle linebacker. He's about 5'11", about 235. The end of the fourth quarter, a four-point game, and the defense really starts to assert itself. That's a big hit by William Bennett. Uh, third down play and uh, our defensive backs played very well. In fact, uh, uh, Chris Martin and uh, Rodney and Hudefa were our uh, champions this week. A fourth down call here by Iowa. They're trailing by four points. They go to the end zone. Oh, I saw that pass, Dave. I, I held my breath because I was afraid that was going to be complete. But uh, you'll see him come back here and try on first down to throw the ball down the field. And Chris Martin intercepts. And I think he's had one in the last four games. And that was a big play, big turnover. And, and that's the kind of things that we've done all year is, is uh, get our hands on the ball when we needed to. Offensively here, Schnurr to the air to David Beasley. Nice catch. Dave had uh, two nice catches in this game. And, you know, we're, we're throwing around a little bit here. We need to do some more of that. Again, the defense and Mike Warren playing his last game at Dyke Stadium with a sack. Mike, a uh, big sack on a play-action pass, and uh, Mike doesn't get a lot of those, and that was a timely one right there. Well, your defense likes to get its hands on the ball. Forced turnovers, Gary. We see it here again. Big hit by Rodney Ray. Puts his head right on the ball. Hudefa uh, picks up that ball and runs it in the end zone. And, uh, big touchdown, really. Uh, I thought we were going to win it then. 31 to 20, less than three minutes to go in the game. A last gasp upcoming, though, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And this will be their fourth down play, their last offensive play. And Shaw just drops that ball. He had a chance to get the first down. But uh, by that time, when that happened, I thought we had a good chance to win it. Dave, I think there's about 25 seconds left. And Gary, as we take a look at the final stats, uh, an advantage to the Hawkeyes in many of the statistical categories. Dave, other than our defense uh, playing, I thought, very solid, and uh, us coming up with some key plays when we needed to. Um, I thought Iowa outplayed us, and the stats sort of bear that out. The only thing that, uh, that came out in our favor is, uh, once again, we only had to play against one team on Saturday. We didn't... Uh, Beat ourselves. We we did turn the ball, ball over the one time on that inter, on that uh, interception, and that cost us a touchdown. And we gave them a long uh, touchdown uh, pass, and we blitzed them. But uh, we didn't turn the ball over other than that one time, and they did. And uh, we were opportunistic enough to win the game. And in the end, a victory for the Wildcats made it a fitting farewell at Dyke Stadium for Northwestern seniors. Feels good. Feels real good, and I'm I'm happy we got a chance to do it for the seniors. Uh, I feel bad about the loss of Fitz, and uh, um, it feels real good, though. No one on this team wants to taste losing again. You know, before you know we're, we're down today. You know, and I think that a good team can fight through that and fight back. You know, that was so important today. Any any team could have gone down the gutter. You know, after being down like that. But that we don't want to experience losing no more. You know, that's gone. You know, they've beaten us 21, whatever, 500 straight years, and we didn't. We weren't gonna. We weren't gonna take that this week. Actually, my number wasn't called. I, I'm not the primary receiver on that play, but when I came off the line, I I noticed that Harrow was getting double teamed out there, and I looked around, no one was on me, so I just turned and showed the quarterback my numbers, and he got it to me. I want to return it if at all possible, and on a short kick like that, if you run up and catch it on the fly, then you end up fair catching most of the time. And I saw that it was going to take a good bounce, and so I waited back for it, and it bounced towards me, so I had a good chance to return it, and uh, it worked out pretty well.
That 60-yarder was the second punt return for a touchdown of Brian Musso's career. He leads the Big Ten in his eighth nationally with an average of 14.3. Coming up next, we'll visit with Wildcats junior defensive tackle Matt Rice. We'll also hear from some celebrities who are paying close attention to the Wildcats in 95. Coming up next on The Gary Barnett Show. I remember one game in the 50s where the Northwestern players got groggy and he, he, by mistake, he went into the Michigan huddle and they let him stay. They said, who cares, we can beat him. So we were not feared, but now we are. Well, 1995 has been a very good year for number 95 of the Wildcats, junior defensive tackle Matt Rice from Middleton, Wisconsin. Uh, five sacks, ten tackles for loss, uh, zeroing in on the top five in tackles for loss in Northwestern history. And Matt, uh, you have to be pleased with the way this defense has really uh, helped this team get to where it is right now. Yeah, I am. I, I think uh, our defense has developed the attitude that uh, we're going to get when we get on the field that we're going to stop people. You know, it might take it might take 10, 15 plays, but we're going to stop. And we're not going to let them score. We're not going to let them get in the end zone. You lost a very key ingredient in this defense on Saturday in your linebacker Pat Fitzgerald. Uh, what sort of feeling was there on the field after Pat went out? Well, initially, I have to admit there was a emotional letdown on the defense. We were all, uh, I mean, I was the, the thing I was thinking about the next play was I wonder if he'll be able to come back, you know, finish the game. And I wasn't really concentrating on what was important. And then when I came off the field and I heard that he probably wasn't going to be returning, that uh, um, I, I was really upset. To tell you the truth, I was really hurt, and because uh, he is a gigantic loss. And uh, we're really going to miss him. But uh, Donnie Holmes stepped in, and he played well. And I, I hope that uh, Pat can tutor Donnie, get him going so he can get ready for Purdue and uh, for the bowl game. As I mentioned, Matt Hales from Middleton, Wisconsin, right outside Madison. Your dad played for the Badgers. How would you end up here at Northwestern? Well, that's a long story, and I, I should just wear a big sign on my chest that explains <laughs> it. Um, <coughs> Well, I was, I was getting recruited by a few of the Big Ten schools, and, and uh, the whole time, Northwestern from the get-go was recruiting me, calling me all the time, and really friendly, enthusiastic. And uh, I'd, always been a, I'd always been kind of a Wildcat fan because, I mean, I mean, they'd come in, and I think the only team they could beat was Wisconsin. They'd come in and beat up on Wisconsin <laughs> when I was a kid. And, uh, and I was born in Columbus, so I had, you know, my grandfather went to Columbus, so I had, I had you know, I figured, try a new Big Ten school. So I, went, I decided to come to Northwestern. My grandpa went to Ohio State. My dad went to Wisconsin. So I figured, you know, three, three generations, three different schools. Well, I know you're pleased with the way it's worked out. Matt, congratulations on a great season. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Well, a lot of alumni have come out of the woodwork to jump on the Northwestern bandwagon, including some who are rather well-known. When I went, I only went there one year. But I went to all the games, and of course, we always lost, and I even went to Wisconsin. We lost there. I went to Michigan. We lost there. When I was at Northwestern, which was only for about a year and a half before I went off to World War II, uh, we were the wimps of the conference, the Big Ten. When I was in school there, we were always losing like 50 to zero. Never thought I'd see the day Northwestern on top of the Big Ten. I went there in the 50s and they insulted us, you know, NU, you know, nothing unusual, nausea unlimited, that's what the other teams yelled, not, not, not useful, they yelled at us, uh, never undefeated, NU, now it's next upset, we're getting tough and uh, it's great. It's nice to be able to make uh, your alumni proud of your football team. You know, and come January, we'll be able to sit back and laugh at this and really, really enjoy it. I thought they forgot all about us. <laughs> you know, they're making millions of dollars. Why would they want to come see us? We're just poor little students, you know, running around with helmets on. So, you know, it's nice to have them come out, recognize us like that. Charlton Heston called and left a message on our machine today from a radio station. And, uh, you know, that's... <laughs> Pretty neat, and you probably probably will never get another chance to speak to the guy. Moses, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Moses. There you go. <laughs> Once they brought Charlton Heston to see if he could part the defensive line of Ohio State, didn't work. He knocked over one linebacker. He went like this: "You will part to get one of our fullbacks." He did not work. Even with Charlton Heston, we couldn't really do anything special. Go you Northwestern is the proper term. We are no longer the wild kittens. Go Northwestern. After that bad hike with the Miami of Ohio game, a lot of teams would have folded. They said, well, we beat Notre Dame, but 
Now, see, we're back to being Northwestern. Throw those marshmallows again. I'm glad they eliminated the marshmallows. That Gary Barnett, he did a great job. He took away the marshmallows, made them tough. They give it off to Darnell Autry to the right side, into the end zone. Touchdown! Thank you, Cindy and Julia and, and any, everybody else, Charles Heston, whoever else, Tony Randall and all of them. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Coach, I understand you've heard from some of the celebrities, too. I got a letter from Charlton Heston and uh, said he didn't play a lot of football, but he broke his nose once doing it <laughs> and helped him get a lot of those uh, parts in those Roman movies. Well, it's nice to know they're watching in Hollywood, <laughs> huh? Well, coming up next, we'll take a look ahead to Saturday's season finale, regular season finale, that is, at Purdue, coming up next on The Gary Barnett Show. Good team. Purdue's uh, offense is tremendous. Uh, Corey Rogers, uh, he's from Chicago here. I played against him in high school uh, in the Catholic League, and you know Mike Allstadt is an All-American fullback. And their offensive line, I've been watching them. I can learn a few things by watching them. Well, Saturday, the Wildcats will wind up the Big Ten season at West Lafayette, Indiana, against the Purdue Boilermakers, site of Gary Barnett's first win as coach of the Wildcats. That's right. Uh, they've produced probably the best three, five, and one team I've ever seen. Uh, they got the number eight rusher in the country. Their offense is 23rd or 22nd in the country in total offense. And they're, they're a heck of an offensive football team. And their defense is just continuing to get better and better every week. And they're, they're very big up front, both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, for us to win this game, we're, we're going to have to have an outstanding performance. We're, we're going to have to play our best game. This game looked difficult before you won nine games, before you were 7-0 and in the Big Ten, and you mentioned Mike Allstadt, one of the premier backs in the conference. Allstadt and uh, Watson, and uh, their quarterback's playing well, and, you know, they're just, they've got a, a good football team. They, they've had some uh, unfortunate breaks this year. And they've played every team tough. They really had a chance to beat Notre Dame right there. Uh, they're uh, one point away from beating Michigan State, coming back and winning that game. They play Penn State right down the wire, the phantom touchdown that's called for Penn State. Uh, Michigan, they lose 0-5. to five. Uh, So this is a good football team, and Jim Coletto's done a great job down there. Should be a great game on Saturday. Coach, good luck. We'll see you next week. Thanks, David. And that'll do it for this edition of the Gary Barnett Show. For the coach, I'm Dave Ennett. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you next week. Excuse me, Coach. Mark. You guys don't get it. We don't make plans ahead right now. We are planning to do this. Uh, week. Hold on, Coach. These are just from some fan for Pat Fitzgerald. Hoping he gets better real soon. You give them to him.